This video is an introduction to congruent triangle proofs. A proof is a set of statements and reasons that uses evidence to explain a logical argument. Much like we might think about a lawyer trying to prove his case in court, a proof in geometry is similar. We're arguing and using evidence. We will use two column proofs to organize our argument. There are different ways to organize proofs in geometry, but the way we're going to feature in this video is called the two column proof. The left column of our proof is gonna be called the statement column and the right column is the reason column. An essential way to be successful with proofs is to recognize geometry vocabulary and be able to expand upon these terms. Below are some key terms that you should know. And I've already gone ahead and defined and drew a diagram for each one, so we'll just take a quick look at each one of them. Perpendicular lines are lines that intersect and form 90 degree angles. Parallel lines are lines that do not intersect, and when they are cut by a transversal, just like I'm adding in the picture here, different angles are formed, one of them being alternate interior angles. A midpoint is the point that splits a line segment into two congruent parts. A bisector is a line, ray, or segment that splits a segment or angle into two congruent parts. So there could be a segment bisector or an angle bisector. My first diagram here is a segment bisector because it is cutting a segment into two congruent parts. Whereas in the second picture, we have an angle bisector because the angle is being cut into two congruent parts. Intersecting lines are lines that cross, and when they cross, they form vertical angles. Those are the congruent angles that are opposite one another. And our last vocabulary term is isosceles triangle. That's a triangle that has two congruent sides and two congruent angles, and those congruent sides and angles are opposite one another. So these six vocabulary terms are key in order to work with congruent triangle proofs. So let's take a look at what some diagrams would look like for proofs. Okay. So for each of these sample questions, a diagram and a given statement are provided for each question. A given statement is quite literally just information the problem is giving you. After reading each given, we're going to write down something that we know based upon it. And as a hint, can we name any parts of the triangles? And our ultimate goal is, can you say things are congruent to one another? That's always going to be a key element of proofs. So if I take a look at number one, it tells me that BD is perpendicular to AC. So if we remember that perpendicular lines form right angles, you might also realize that right angles are congruent to one another because they're all 90 degrees. I can see here that angle BDA and angle BDC are going to be congruent to one another. So I'm going to write that in here, angle BDA and angle um, BDC are congruent right angles. So I'm taking the given information and I'm just expanding upon it and saying, well, what do I know based on that? How can I elaborate upon that given? All right, and number two, if DB is bisecting angle ABC, let's think about what we know based on that. If we look at angle ABC, that's this angle up top, and we can see that DB is going into it. It's splitting it into two congruent parts. So I know that angle ABD must be congruent to angle CBD. Notice that when we mark off congruent angles, we put a little arc in there, okay? In number one, when we marked off the right angles, we put the little square. Number three, C is the midpoint of AE. That means if I take AE, C has to be the middle of it. So that gives me two congruent parts. We're going to use tick marks to indicate congruent segments. So I know that AC is congruent to EC. Number four, we're given that AE is bisecting BD. 
So in these problems with the word bisect, sometimes it can be confusing what's actually being cut in half. You always want to look at whatever comes after the word bisect. That's what's cut in half or divided by two. That's what we're looking at. So I'm going to look at BD in the picture. And I'm going to look at the two halves of it. And I have BC and I have DC. Those two must be congruent if A is bisecting and cutting through BD. Just for reference, when you name a line segment, the two letters can be reversed. So BC and CB are the same line segment as one another. All right, number five tells me that BC is parallel to DA. Sometimes parallel lines are indicated with these little arrowheads. And what I like to do, and go ahead and you know grab your highlighter if you want, is I like to highlight the two lines that I know are parallel to one another. And I can often form a Z shape with them. So if I go ahead and connect BD there, highlight over BD to connect the parallel lines, I get this like backward Z shape. That basically BD serves as our transversal and it forms our alternate interior angles. So I know that angle CBD and angle ADB are congruent alternate interior angles. When you have alternate interior angles that are formed by parallel lines and transversals, they're always going to be congruent to one another. As reference, when you're naming angles, and we're using three letters to name an angle, the middle letter is important. That's the vertex of the angle. That's the point where the two rays meet to form the angle. The outer letters can be swapped. So if I called it angle CBD, but you called it angle DBC, those are equivalent to one another. All right, and then our last example here, AB is parallel to CD. Well, here's parallel again. I'm going to highlight over our parallel lines, and I'm going to see if I can connect to make that Z shape, and sure enough, I can. It's the angles that are in the corner of the Z shape that are going to be the alternate interior angles that are congruent. So in this problem... Angle ABD and angle CDB are congruent alternate interior angles. If you're looking at this problem, or the last one for that matter, and you're unsure of how I picked what alternate interior angles to use, because you might look at this, if I erase my picture for a second, you might look at this and say, well, I see different Z shapes here. I see this one, and I see this one. And you might say, well, I don't know which one to pick. It depends on what segments you're given as parallel here. So since I was given that A, B, and C, D were parallel, those are the ones that are going to be forming the alternate interior angles with the transversal. That's how I know how to make that Z shape if you're going to use that as a shortcut. So hopefully this was a little introduction to what you're going to see with proofs. We talked about the setup of a proof. We talked about given statements, and we looked at some sample diagrams and vocabulary terms.